Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the most popular trading card games in the world, comprising over 10,000 cards. The sheer quantity of cards has created a wall of complexity that scares away potential newcomers. But things are changing. Singles, Yu-Gi-Tubers, and articles. The barrier clears away day by day. The question left is, can a total noob enter the ring using nothing but the sealed product that smart people warn us fools against? Hello and welcome. I am Shimian the Simeon, jumping into sealed only craze started by legends such as the people shown. We will be building a Yu-Gi-Oh deck using nothing but sealed products and a budget of 60 Rs each week. No singles allowed. Unlike other sealed only challenges, we will be allowing trading for cards because if we are going for that authentic old school feel, trading is fundamental. Trading will have a stipulation to otherwise keep in the spirit of sealed only. We can only trade for a card if we have done our best effort to obtain it via sealed product. This means that a card only obtainable from, say, Ancient Guardians can only be traded for if the set goes out of print and we are unable to find any remaining sealed product. Our budget will be boosted by winning games while losing games will decrease our budget. Our goal is to get to $120 budget and we fail if we ever get down to $30. Because let's be real, at that point, there is no recovery. First two weeks of matches are not counted because success was never an option. So, let's dive in. The clock is ticking, the spiral forming. We have six weeks to turn things around before we fail the challenge, so we will be need to be smart and frugal. Due to our losses last week, we have $56 to work with this week. After some thought, I decided to crack open two boxes of the Chaos Impact Special Edition boxes, the least valuable way to get the cards we want, and five packs of Genesis Impact, which I got for cheap. On to the packs! So this week we're we've got fifty six dollars to work with, so managed to find Genesis Impact for four dollars each, and each of these special edition Chaos Impact seventeen seventy five. Ended up going with Chaos Impact because we kind of need more of the unchained cards to make our deck work, and Genesis Impact. The main thing we're looking for are the nightmare cards. If uh, it wouldn't be bad to also find some Live Twins, Live Twins do have. Their link monsters are fiends, but we're not banking on that. There's only five of these packs here. So let's get cracking. I'm going to leave the life twin one last, and we'll do all the other Genesis Impact first. Let's crack open our Chaos Impact. Now, I don't think I care about what this special edition card is. It's, uh, what is it exactly? Spell card, a trap card, and two link monsters, one of which is a six samurai card, which... Yeah, we're not going to care about. I think the other one is Scrap Wyvern. So, let's find out what they are. Oh, there's one of the six samurai cards, which, like I said, we're not going to really care about. And the other one is Armory Call. Which we can't really use. Uh, one moment. So, Armory Call and Battle Shogun. Let's first find out what the other one was. A Scrap Wyvern and Dragon Maid Sendoff. So, irrelevant to us. Let's do a pattern here. I'm going to leave the Live Twins to last. So, we'll do two Chaos Impact first. Pact 1. Alright. Action Magic, What Train, Val Valiant Nyx, uh, Monster Express, Yada, Bonds Alone, Aramage, da da da. Next pack, Collider, Cascade, come on, Shuna, and a Prism. Ooh, oh, that's, uh, That'll be good when we get to the stage where we can actually, tr where we're allowed to trade cards due to the rules that I've set. Uh, yeah. Neat. <laughs> Not a secret word that we wanted. That's a shame. 
Oh, well, let's crack one of the new the new booster packs that we've got here. World Lance, Magistus Theurgy, Cyburst Gadget, Engraver of the Mark. Ooh, Hat Trigger is actually interesting. Oh, there's an Evil Twin Kissicle. And a Star Drawing, which I don't think we can use, yeah. Okay, Chaos Impact, Patrol Plane, Manstrong, Old Mind, Gladiator Beast, and Congrate. All right. Next impact. We're just going to be making loads of impacts, not necessarily in our favor. Yes. Got our unicorn. Backup secretary. Drytron beta. Extra foolish burial. Herald of ultimateness. I can't really complain about getting uh, both damage juggler and hat tricker. They might even get into the deck, to be honest. Even as just a temporary thing. They're locked out by the Unchained cards, but... I don't know, I don't, we'll, we'll see. Uh, which one did I just crack open? Another Genesis Impact. Oops. Oh. Book of the Law. Ben 10. Lance. Phoenix. Evil Twin President. Star Drawing. And Trismegistus. All right. Need to open two Chaos Impact now to get it back to the order I wanted to do. Cauldron, Dream. Come on, where are the twins? Ugh. All right. Come on. And Aruha at least, or Rakia. Come on. Mimikurial. Da 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 Jelly Cannon, Gizmek Yada. We can't use those. We don't need any more Jelly Cannons. It's too much. Alright. Genesis Impact. Evil Twin Present. Invoked Kokaitis. Another Drytron. Nightmare Griffin. Cyanate Regression. Bird Lance. And Drytron Medionis. Alright. Last Chaos Impact. This has been a, not the best Chaos Impact, so Genesis Impact at least was somewhat positive. Cascade, Crusher Run, Mon another Monster Express. What, what, what were these balls? Oh, come on. At least Genesis Impact did not disappoint us. Let's find out what the last pack was. What did the twins give us? Another Drytron Delta Alpha, Dark Mist. Engraver, Magistus Vit Vitra, another Drytron, Light Wind Channel, and a Trismagistus. Well, I can't blame, complain too much. We did get to all three of the nightmares that I wanted for this deck. We did get to the Form Mage, and I mean, this is just a pretty card. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't really play it in this deck. We need the Kiss to Kill, so that's not going in. But, I will now leave you off to the deck tech. Shouldn't, not really going to be too much changing, I don't think, this week, unfortunately. Okay, for this week, I've decided to remove these cards. Starting with the Marincess cards. I'm cutting the Marincess package because it's pretty clear they're not really working with this deck. They need a bit more around them. I'm cutting a Drowning Mirror Force just to be able to help us get a bit more space for actual gas rather than just trying to be defensive all the time. Cut the supply squad because at the moment we don't have enough use for it. It might come back again once we've got a bit more of the unchained cards. And Gizmak Yada's cut because it's, I'm sorry, it's not good. In the extra deck, similar thing to the main deck, cutting the Marine Cess cards and Protocol Gardener because we've got a lot less Cyburst cards now. I think we've We'll only have one left. Into this extra deck though, we are putting in all three of the Nightmare cards. Griffin I'm not 100% certain on, and it's a fact I need to double check whether it will allow us to use the Abominable Spells and Traps when they get destroyed. But 
really the key parts here are the Unicorn and Phoenix, which give us a lot more removal and ability to actually play the game. Perform Major, Hat Tricker and Damage Juggler are both going in. Hat Tricker as Special Summon Fodder and Damage Juggler as some small amount of defense that's still also a level 4 that we can just summon. Cyber Skadget, it gets us another card out of the graveyard, which lets us potentially do some link plays. A new Mari Mari, because what I noticed in the previous week is that we had a weird tendency to always draw our one Mari Mari. By having two, yes, we're more likely to draw one of them, but we're also more likely to have one still in the deck. And that's why I've decided to put one more in. Double Summon. Honestly, I'm 50-50 on this card. It probably was not worth putting in. And putting back in Nimble Momonga, because Nimble Beaver, Beaver into Nimble Momonga gives us a Nightmare Phoenix. And honestly, that's not a bad thing at this point. It's a straight upgrade. Nimble Momonga still acts as a good defensive card. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, game one. Simple setup, T set, opponent, Drytron, enough said. Alright, game two. This one was a bit of a grind fest. Uh, I mean, T set pass with Nimble Momonga, opponent went ahead and Harvey's Feather Dust my escape, which they then Ash Blossomed, Allure of Darkness, uh, and set a card. So, I did what I felt was the obvious thing. Drop Rakia, swap Rakia with Aruha in order to get Unchained Soul, and then pull out a Nightmare Unicorn to open up the field. Then attacked. My opponent then Lightning Stormed me, and then basically passed turn. Cyber Gadget to get back Momonga, turn that into a Phoenix, getting a token, and then attacking, which revealed the, my opponent's game plan Thunder Dragons. This then turned into a bit of a grind fest. Uh, mm, I think my opponent had a bit of a bad hand. So this just kind of kept going. I set a jelly cannon here. And my opponent got out Dragon Duo, getting out a lot of power, then Dragon Titan. During their attack, I sent their Dragon Titan back, but still lost, ended up losing my Phoenix. They went ahead and did some more setup with their Thunder Dragons. I then drew Nibble Mwanga, so I set it and passed. Thunder Dragon Dark. Four abilities. Thunder Dragon Duo. Stri strike a Dragon, sorry about that. And just basically keeps going. They keep com comboing off, eventually getting into Dragon Duo again. Uh, sorry, Thunder Dragon Titan again. So... At this point, I wasn't really drawing any gas. Without a Pot of Avarice, I wasn't really going to have much of a choice, so I just went ahead and just did a bit of um, protection plays, hoping to at least get something the next turn. Which... Yeah, I got some health here, but caught by the grave. So, Drowning Mirror Force, clear my opponent's field. They continue on playing, doing their combos in order to set up a strong board again. I drew Bazoo, which I used to step on Dragon Dark, but my opponent used Dragon Dark's ability to then get to Thunder Dragon Duo, which was basically then game. This will drag out for a while longer, but at this point, we're already going to game two. Round two, I opened up the Nimble Beaver, so my opponent, I made my opponent go first here. Can't quite recall off the top of my head right why I chose that. I think I was trying to lean into some unchained plays. Really, with I should have gone for going first, so my opponent built up a strong board. I went in with Unmasked Dragon and tried to get myself a very helpful Mari Mari, at which point I ended up misplaying and my client glitched out so I didn't actually understand where Aruha was at this point. As you can see my opponent got rid of Aruha 
And the reason I misplayed, I was trying to get out the Dragon Draco Berserker, but because I, of course, I special summoned uh, Aroha, that cut does not work. Really, what I should have done is just try to get into Unchained Abomination. I think my opponent still would have been able to pop me, so... Yeah, that was round two of game two. Into game three. Not an ideal starting hand. My opponent was playing... Numeron combo with Wind Witches. So they went ahead and got into Clear Wing Synchro and started going off. I went with the Harvey's Feather Duster, which sealed this game because w Waking of the Dragon. So this is something I decided that I learned from for round two, which you'll see soon. But I just tried to rebuild at least some defense. Realistically, the only thing I could have drawn that might have given me a chance was Soul Crossing, and obviously I did not get it. Yeah, as you can see, Unmasked Dragon, which got Storming Mirror Forced when I tried to um, resolve its effect. This de this opponent plays so much Mirror Force. Game three, uh, round two, I opened a pretty rubbish hand, to be honest. So, my opponent went ahead in Lightning Storm, which helped me actually recover a bit. They went Numeron Network, comboed off and got into Underworld Goddess. I decided to stop their damage for a turn with the intent of using the damage juggler. I tried to use Monster Reborn because I did not read Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Cards have text and I should probably read them. So I just ended up setting the one card I really could use. And Drowning Mirror Force obviously does not stop the Underworld Goddess, so... Yeah, this was basically game, or at least so it appeared. I then drew Unmasked Dragon, which I then attempted to attack with, which my opponent stopped with their Mirror Force. So many Mirror Forces, I don't understand it. But they gave me a Mari Mari. Should have done that. Uh, before you wonder, no, I don't end up winning this game, sadly. I then thought about it and I decided I wasn't going to bother with getting rid of that back row because I realized they hadn't done anything with it. So I realized it had to be the Waking the Dragon again. So my opponent had, was forced into using the... trying to go into a Zeus play. At which point they ended up walking into Drowning Mirror Force. And I, this was probably the closest game I actually had this week. Unfortunately, Lightning Storm wiped that all away, and we just don't really have the ability to recover at this time. So, that was a bit of a shame. But, it does show that we are actually getting a little bit better. I've forbidden Chalice there to Zeus for no real good reason. It was just to stop them from blowing up the board. But it didn't actually matter. I drew Soul Crossing, which is so frustrating at this point in the game. Finally, seal, um, game four, round one. It's back. This is Shadow L L Invoked. I was able to take advantage of them trying to pop my... Yeah, Abominable Chamber to get Aruha, but ultimately this game we had a bad hand against a very effective control deck. So yeah, I just surrendered. In round two, I elected to go first again and end up only being able to set a Unmasked Dragon. My opponent went ahead and did, did their invoked plays, uh, getting into Mekaba. And at this point, they kind of do a mis... Uh, they surprised me by letting me get a Mari Mari. I think they assumed that it would be safe for them to do whatever they wanted. So I went ahead and did my plays, 
And at this point, I thought about it and I realized I could get both Draco Berserker and Obelisk. Now, I did end up losing Obelisk at, at Draco Berserker, as you can see, due to forgetting that you can discard Alistair to buff up an Invoke card. I should have just attacked with, um, with Obelisk first, but oh well. This was one of the few times that we actually managed to resolve Obelisk, so can we really be that upset? I think we can't. This is just too cool. Unfortunately, at this point, the opponent would combo off and end the game. I think they were hoping the Super Poly would get rid of Obelisk, only to discover that Obelisk is not affected. Ended up having to step over him. It was their only option. Foolish Burial for Shadow Hedgehog. Yeah, th at this point, the game's over. I went with Arakia because of using the Unchained effects to go and basically cycle through blockers, but I kind of misplay how I do this, and it doesn't really end up mattering in this case anyway. So as you can see, going into Rakia again, but yeah, I should have gotten for a Roha first. Dang, another four losses. We came close to winning at one of the games, but we just la lack any sort of consistency and game plan, and the Chaos Impact packs this week offered no favors. Next week, we're, we are coming in with $52.50, which is a heavy barrier. We will see how next week goes, but if we still can't get things to work, I will need to try a radical change to the plan. See you all next week as we attempt the recovery drive. Like, comment, and subscribe.